Got hey, welcome back to the Good Morning Artesia Radio Show. And uh, we're having a wonderful Monday morning here in Artesia, New Mexico. We're going to continue with our conversation with the barking guy who's in the studio with us here today for the first time in a couple months. And still this hour, too, we're going to have uh, Elizabeth from Main Street. We're going to talk about, uh, I'm sure, Red Dirt, Black Gold, which is coming up not uh, this weekend, but next weekend. Yep. And uh, that's going to be exciting going on in town. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. No, the barking guy was talking about the gruesome twosome. And I said, you mean the Wacky Racers? And so we looked it up because you, you used to watch that show when you were a kid, right? Yes, the, I did. The wacky, the wacky Races. Yeah, there were Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah. And they had the gruesome twosome. And they drove the creepy coop. Yep, they did. Let's see. Monsters in their horror-themed car, which includes a small bell tower inhabited by a fire-breathing dragon, bats, and other creatures. Mm -hmm. The Creepy Coop special booster is Dragon Power, with the dragon acting as a Ratto unit. And the two, the Gruesome Twosome, were Tiny, Big Gruesome, and Bella, Little Gruesome. So it's Tiny and Bella, who were Big Gruesome and Little Gruesome. And the but no, you had to correct me. That's not the gruesome twosome that you were referring to in no. current news. No. You were talking about uh, the governor of the state of New Mexico? Yep. And the governor of the state of California. The governor of the state of California. Oh my gosh, what a piece of work out there. California's got plenty of problems too. Yes, it has. We just don't need any of those problems to migrate to New Mexico. Nope. But it's almost like we have an open invitation to welcome all of those problems to come to New Mexico. And uh, that's that's going to be kind of crazy. I'm not sure what's going to happen. I know we live in a bubble, obviously. We, we live in a... If you compare politics, for example, here in southeast New Mexico, we're, we're in a totally different world yes. than, than the centers of power in New Mexico. And... Um, and so it's it's going to be interesting to see if there's enough disappointment and anger in the governor in other parts of the state. If you know if folks down here can convince their friends and colleagues and neighbors in other parts of New Mexico, just enough of them to uh, to make a change at the ballot box next fall, that would be fantastic. But uh, let's hope we can wait that long. <laughs> I was reading an article today, Barking Guy. You probably have seen this. Um, good morning. Uh, we have Kith and Ken. Yes, we do. We do. Let's see. Uh, do I still have that in my email or did I lose that? Here it is. Um, according to the Albuquerque Journal, which is a newspaper, <laughs> um... Because we have had so much growth in this part of the state, especially Eddy and Lee counties, when they get to redistricting, they're going to have to take some of our people and move them into the second congressional district. They're going to have to redistrict because um, you're supposed to have similar levels of population in each of your yes. each of your districts, right? Yep. And uh, so if we have more than that number here, then they're going to have to realign how the districts are drawn in order to equalize the populations, which means we could have some of our conservatives. So I could see some of these wackos taking conservative parts of this district and diluting them into the uh, non-conservative parts of these other districts. And uh, trying to play around with it that way. Can you, could you see that happening? Yeah, I can see it. You know, gerrymandering has been a thing for 200 years. Oh, it's not a new thing. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I don't want anybody to think that I'm like, really? They would do that? <laughs> it's like, of course they would do that. Uh, given the chance. You remember? Well, what's his name? The Speaker of the House. What's his name? Um, Brian Egoff. That's how you say that name. Yeah. Okay. I have a totally different 
way of saying his name in my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, um, I mean, right after the election, right after Harold won, he said, well, we're just going to redistrict that so that could never happen again. And then people asked him, do you really mean that? Oh, 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 no, 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 no. I don't really mean that. No. I'm going to go with his first words. Uh huh. That's what he uh -huh. really thinks. That's what he really thinks. What did we get from Kith and Kin here today, Barking Guy? Let's take a look. Oh, you made it on a beautiful day for their sandwiches. I'm going to hold this up. Go to the bigger camera there. You ready for the reveal? Ready. Ta ta da da. Oh, look at that. We've got bacon cheddar, ham, and American, I think. Um, ham and Jack, and sausage and Jack. Mm. And you know, their sausage is really, really good. Lana and I were talking about this over the weekend. We, when we lived in Mississippi, uh, not far from the radio station, there was a hotel, the Inez. And in the hotel was a restaurant. And the folks that ran the restaurant were from a part of Louisiana where they made really, really wonderful sausage. Andouille sausage and some other types of sausage. You probably heard the BAM guy, the, the, the chef, on, yeah. uh, talk about Andouille sausage all the time back in the day. So this little restaurant made these absolutely delicious sausage for breakfast and, and on sandwiches. And the sausage that you get at the Kith and Kin reminds us of that type of sausage. It's a really, really good flavor. And it's an excellent sausage. So these are gourmet breakfast sandwiches. This isn't something somebody just wraps up and throws out a window at you. This is, this is lovingly prepared on fresh-made croissants you get the coffee, you get the other beverages there. I mean, you're talking gourmet breakfast in Artesia, New Mexico at Kith and Kin. Yep. You're hungry now, aren't you? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're sitting here waiting on you. You get first pick today. Unless, of course, Tana comes in and wants one. Okay. Okay. But you get first pick. So, all right. Uh, thanks to Kith and Kin for that. Let us get into this week's schedule. Sure. What are we been? What are we going to be doing this week, Barking Guy? Well, today, well, this is the first day of school in Lake Arthur for pre-K. Okay. This is the first radio segment you know, for this uh, Bulldog season and Panther season. Starts back up today. Uh, Zia, open house, six p.m. today, and Tuesday, seventeenth. Ju the junior high open house is at 6 p.m. The high school open house is at 5.30 p.m. Okay. This is in um, Lake Arthur? No, this is in Artesia. Oh, okay. Because I see the junior high open house on the schedule for today. And the kindergarten pre-screening. Yeah. But you have, you have additional information. Yeah. That's why we have you here. Well, it said AIS, which is the intermediate school. Intermediate school, that's, that's right. That's Zia. That's Zia, that's right. Yes, you are correct. Uh, Thursday the 19th, JVB football versus Hobbs, 4 o'clock. New, new time. It's the first day of kindergarten at Grand Heights. Okay. And the, the soccer game versus Moriarty, that's at 4.30 p.m., and there's no JV. Just okay. the varsity. So that's a slight change in the start time. Slight change in the start time. Friday the 20th, girls soccer, they're at the Goddard Tournament. And Friday and Saturday, they're, they're there. And the first game that they'll play is versus Mayfield at 4 o'clock. Okay. We'll have to check and see if, since Goddard is closed and they're not doing any athletics, if they're going to, if Goddard is going to participate in the Goddard Tournament. Or if they have a Goddard tournament, yeah. we don't, we don't know. But this is what I have from uh, the Bulldogs.org. That's right. This is what I picked up. Varsity football at Carlsbad, seven o'clock. The game is still on. Okay. And they have a AHS Traditions Assembly at 10:42 a.m. that day, and Lake Arthur six-man 
Football is supposed to play Hondo and host Hondo. Okay. Uh, I don't have their full schedule. I'm going to go over to, to Lake Arthur uh, after, after I'm done here. I don't have anything on their volleyball. I don't know if they're going to have a volleyball team. Uh, last year they didn't have a girls basketball team because they didn't have enough players. Right. So, so we don't know the, the story about that, but I'll find out. Sit. I'm being told that there may be a change in uh, open house schedules. Okay. So I'm going to get uh, confirmation. Okay. And uh, so put a hold on that thought on these open houses, houses. that you were mentioned. So. Yeah. Yeah, what I have is, is what was on the well, uh, bulldogs.org. Yeah, yeah, that's what I have too. So so if there's a change, Gene will know. We're, we're going to find out here real quick. I appreciate yeah. the folks letting me know, and uh, we'll we'll get confirmation here. And yep, and I got one more day to report. That's Saturday the 21st. Okay. I have boys soccer versus Boleyn at home at 1 p.m., varsity only. And the girls are supposed to be at that Goddard tournament. And we'll find out. You know, there there are changes. Yeah. And but this is what I have so far. If there's any changes, you know, Jane will know. And Well apparently not. <laughs> or apparently not. <laughs> well, it's up in the air. <laughs> no, I'm getting a whole bunch of text messages. Folks are saying, uh, "Open house is canceled. Open house is canceled." And I'm like, "Okay, let me let me verify and make sure that that's true." I don't doubt yeah. it, but I want to get it. If well, if it is, uh, you know, we'll know later. Well, we'll find out here in just a little bit. We did get a uh, th there was a uh, note that was put out uh, by the schools, and it may be in here. Um, let's see. Uh, how exciting was it to welcome 3,700 students to the schools? They're looking forward to all of them and more joining us tomorrow, meaning today. Um, some schools in other districts have had to recently go to remote learning for 10 days due to the number of positive COVID cases at a campus. Uh, this is due to the requirements of the New Mexico Environment Department's rapid response protocols. So this, you got three different departments that you're dealing with here. You got the Department of Health, which is tracking all the data. You have the Public Education Department, which apparently rules all of education in New Mexico. And then you have the Environment Department, which is if you have COVID cases in your place of business, that's who you report to. You don't report to the Department of Health. You don't report to the Public Education Department, although I think it can come through the Public Education Department. But it eventually winds up at the... Uh, environment department and they have the uh the, the closure rules uh let's see uh do not send your child to school or to a workout if any of the following are true your child is sick or you suspect may be getting sick your child or a household member tests positive for covid19 your child is considered a close contact with a person testing positive for covid19 your child has a household member who is considered a close contact and is having symptoms of COVID-19. So if any of that situation applies in your household, don't send the kids to school or to practice or anything like that. Mm. If any of the above are true, please do the following. Notify the principal, coach, director, or sponsor. If your child is sick, the school nurse will, nurse will work with you on the next steps. If your child or a household member tests positive for COVID, the principal, coach, director, or sponsor will notify the school nurse, nurse and the superintendent. You will be contacted with the next steps. If your child is a close contact, the principal, coach, director, or sponsor will notify the school nurse. You will be contacted for the next steps. Please do not come to the school if your child or a household member tests positive for COVID-19 or if you are considered a close contact. Contact the school, and we will make arrangements to provide your child with anything needed while absent. So, um, and then, of course, they're asking for uh, understanding and cooperation with the mask requirements. So that's just, uh, that was put out yesterday afternoon by uh, Superintendent John Ross Null. And uh, let's see. So we'll, we'll see if we have a confirmation on the other info that we've been told. Okay. But... Uh, 
I guess just be careful out there, folks. Don't uh, hang around in groups, you know, wash your hands. If Carry you, a hand sanitizer. Yeah, absolutely. Did you get the one from CVE or from, yeah, from CVE? Do you have the one that CVE has? I don't think has? I have the CVE. I think I have the PVT one. Okay. So. I'm looking. I'm looking. Yeah, they've got some really nice little hand sanitizers. I got the one from CVE. <clears throat> of course, we've got it here in the studio and everything, so. Boy, you got a lot of stuff in your pockets there, barking guy. <laughs> okay, that's the one you got from PVT. T. All right, all right, good, good. So, well, good deal. What else is on your list, barking guy? Well, we covered it all. We covered it all. All right, well, let me, uh, I'm going to hand barking guy the box of breakfast from Kith and Ken, and we've got plates and uh, napkins right over here because you're going to need it. Yep. And those are big enough there if you oh, want to yeah. take a half or a whole and take part of it later. Uh, you can, you're more than welcome to dig in there and, All right. and enjoy. Barking Guy, thank you so much. And go dogs. Arf! All right, the old Barking Guy back with us here in studio. Let's get